Hi, I'm Mike Thompson, here at the OU Innovation Hub's Fabrication Lab. This video is part of the Red Level Certification. I'm going to show you how to safely operate the planar joiner combination machine. This is probably the most dangerous machine in the shop, and I've been instilled with a healthy fear of these by my dad and grandpa. I've heard horror stories of fingers going missing in the blink of an eye, so please pay attention. Despite all this, it is one of the most fun and useful machines in the shop, and if you're serious about woodworking, then you will need to use one of these. The quiz in the video description covers the red level tools. Once you pass this quiz, then you will need to schedule a one-on-one -on -one certification session with the staff at the front desk. So once you've passed the quiz, please go schedule the certification at the Fab Lab front desk. This tool has a set of rotating knives that chip away at the wood. This cutter head has straight knives. They're cheaper than spiral cutter heads, and they do an acceptable job for what we're doing in here. We can use the top side or the bottom side of the cutter head. When we're using the top side, we're in joiner mode. When we're using the bottom side, we're in planer mode. You'll almost always start by using the joiner. If it's in planer mode, you'll have to make sure that the planer bed is below this arrow, and then pull the little silver pin to unlock the dust collector guard, and pivot it on around to the bottom of the cutter head. Then unlock the joiner here and lower it into place. Then lift up on these two little silver handles, push them into each other, and then lock them down. And that keeps the bed attached to the base. It's got two parallel plates, an in-feed and an out-feed. The cutter head is right here in between the two. This tool is so dangerous because of the exposed cutter that will grab things and pull them in. This guard here can be positioned to cover every portion of the cutter head that you're not actually using. And this knob here raises and lowers it, and this little knob here moves it in and out. For this demonstration, I'm going to take this 2x6 and turn it into a nice piece of dimension lumber. I first need to get a face flat, and this is where the joiner excels. It can be used to straighten crooked wood. And when you look down a piece of wood, you can see that it's bent a certain way. The convex side is called the crown. And when you're running the joiner, you always want to do it so that the crown faces up. This is so that the wood doesn't rock back and forth on you. Let's go over to the whiteboard, and I'll explain what's going to happen. Like I already mentioned, the in-feed and out-feed tables are parallel. The cutting knives are aligned with the out-feed table, and we don't touch the adjustment knob that's taped over. We have a lever to adjust the height of the in-feed tables relative to the top of the cutter. And it's marked in 64 but it's not terribly precise. And that's okay, and you'll see why in a minute. When we place our wood on the in-feed table and push it across the cutter head, it's only going to take off a strip of whatever thickness you set. The key here is that the wood is stable as you push it through, and that's why we do it with the crown up. With the crown up, it's going to take off this little bit in front and then this little bit here in the back. Then on the second pass, it'll take off a bit more, and so on, until the bottom of the piece is flat, and you end up with something that looks like this. Now, if your piece is really bowed, you'll have to cut it up into smaller pieces first to avoid turning most of your wood into hamster bedding. If you don't do it with the crown up, your piece can rock on you, and then it's impossible to hold down flat, and you're not going to get a large flat surface. It's also removing the useful part of your wood, which isn't good. So crown up, always. Now, to set this up, I like to go back to zero on the depth and then come down to what I want. You can't do more than 1 8 inch per pass. Now, I'll adjust the guard so that the wood will just barely clear. And I'm always going to use push blocks, even though the cutter is covered by the wood and the guard. You just shouldn't take any chances with this machine. Now I'll turn on the dust collector in the corner of the shop and make sure that the correct hose is connected and plug in the one for the CNC router to increase the suction. Safety glasses on and push blocks ready. I'll turn on the joiner. I'm going to feed it slowly through and push down hard to keep it flat. Now I'm judging my cut by the sound. You'll hear the blade not cut in the middle of my piece because it's bent upward. I'm going to make repeated passes until I hear the same sound and feel the same amount of resistance all the way through across the wood. Then I know I've got it flat. 
This next part is another nifty aspect of the joiner. I've calibrated this fence to be 90 degrees to the table. And now that I've got one perfectly flat face, I'm going to rotate it so that my flat face is against the fence. And now I'm going to push really hard against the fence. And by keeping this wood against it, the bottom face will become flat, but also perpendicular to the face that's against the fence. And this is where the magic is. No other tool in the shop can make two faces flat and perpendicular to each other. If you're going to be gluing pieces of wood together to make a tabletop or something, you must have flat faces that are true to each other. And this is why the joiner is required. Now let's pretend that I'm going to make a tabletop and join lots of these pieces on edge. So I'll need to true up this other edge like I did the first, but I can use the table saw for that though, because I have a large flat face for the table and a straight edge to ride along the fence. Now I'm going to do that last because I want to make this opposite face flat and parallel to this face. To do that, I'm going to use the planer. To use the planer, you lift up on the silver handles and pull them apart. Then you can raise the jointer bed. And be sure that this little lock catches over here so that it doesn't fall back down on you. And now I'll flip the dust collector over and store the hose oh, like this. These controls down here are for the planer, and the wheel adjusts the height of the table and thus the final thickness of the wood. It says right over here that your wood needs to be at least six inches long for it to feed through. And you can't take off more than one-eighth of an inch in any one pass, but I usually do less than that to keep the blade from bogging down. The wheel is calibrated in thousands, and it indicates the full revolution is 530 seconds, which is 15625. For initial passes, the scale on the left is what you'll use, and it'll get you within a sixteenth. I started with a 2x6, which is actually 1.5 inches thick, so I'm going to set my first pass at 1 and 3 eighths because I lost a little bit with the joining earlier. This will also ensure that I don't take off more than an eighth of an inch. It's probably not going to cut all the way through though on the first attempt. This lever here engages the power feed, and it's almost always engaged. Pulling it down and over here disengages it, but I've never had a reason to disengage it because I'm lazy. So I'll turn it on and send it through. Now just like the joiner, I'm listening to the sound and watching the outfeed to see how it's going. I'm going to plane this down to an inch thick, so I'll run it through a couple more times, an eighth of an inch at a time. Now for this last eighth inch, I'm going to measure it before I get to my inch because I want it to be perfect. So you can see that I'm pretty close here. So now I'm going to do some math and switch to using the hand wheel markings to take off exactly the right amount. And look at that. Now I'll cut that unfinished edge on the table saw and check that out. And now I have a really nice piece of lumber that I can make nice things with. And like I said earlier, if you're really serious about woodworking, then this tool is essential. Now make sure that you've watched all the other red level videos and then take the quiz in the video description. Once you've passed, you'll need to set up an appointment at the Fab Lab front desk to schedule a final checkout on the red tools. Go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already. I'm Mike Thompson, and thanks for watching. I really appreciate it.